Beretta Air X 100. Full tabletop review right now. I'll cover all the highs, and there's lots, and I will definitely cover the lows on this tactical carbine. Be careful what you click on, because if you are motivated right now to buy the Air X 100, I might demotivate you slightly from what I'm going to say about the gun. And I don't know what it is. In TMP, sometimes the items I'm talking about are all wins. I mean, we're talking about likability scales, 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10. Lately, not so much. I'm talking about videos I have not posted yet either. Testing complete. I'm going to go into post-production. You'll see what I'm talking about. It just happens that way. Here's how I'm going to intro, though, with a life truth. I think you guys will like this. Frequently, no, check that, pretty much always, timing is everything in life. If your timing's good, success. If your timing's off, failure. We've all been there, right? Hey, I really wanted to ask that girl out. You waited too long, now she has a boyfriend. Oh wait, she's engaged? Yeah, dude, you should have asked her like six weeks ago. Things happen fast. You really wanted that really awesome job. Great benefits, paid well. You waited too long. You had a great resume, great track record. You're an awesome worker, but they have no more positions available. You know, people department says, hey, Check back with us, you know, maybe a year from now, two years from now. We might have a position for you. Dang it, your timing was off. And the list goes on and on. Getting back to the ARX, its timing is off. Way off. I mean, I showed this gun back in 2011 in the Beretta booth, once upon a time. They said it would take about a year for the gun to come to the commercial market. 22 version first. Maybe a year and a half, you'll see the center fire version. Here we are, four years later. Finally, tabletop review. This time it's not my fault. It's Beretta's fault. They took forever to bring the gun out. Now, let's just say three and a half years. Does three and a half years, because the gun became available last year, 2014. Does three and a half years make or break a gun in this industry? Um, I'm kind of thinking more along the lines of yes. Especially when a manufacturer has made it public. You're better not to say anything and just come out with a gun. That's a lot smarter. How many manufacturers have we say, seen play this game? Hey, check out this really cool gun I'm coming out with. What's your time frame for issuing it? Seven years? Then don't show it to us. It's kind of like a movie trailer. I see a really cool movie trailer. I'm like, hey, I want to watch that tomorrow. Eh, it's coming out in summertime. Three months from now. What? It's annoying. I think the timing is off on the RX. Here's one reason why. Tavor. Hey, this isn't a bullpup. I know. But the Tavor something different. It's not an AR. But it's really established a foothold in the market. Tavor sell. No one sells them. They hang on to them. It's a great selling bullpup. From what I know. I think my review helped a lot. A lot of team peers went out and bought the Tavor off that review. I've met you. They love them. It's a great gun. It's not all timing, though, from what I'm getting ready to tell you right now. It's a big part of it, but not everything. My official prediction, before we get into all the details of the gun, is this. I think the Beretta ARX 100 will be a commercial flop. That's what I say. Knowing the market, knowing you guys, I think you represent a fair cross-section of gun buyers in the U.S. And my own preferences, having shot the gun, and my own takeaways on what I hate about the gun, what I like about the gun, I just don't think it's going to sell that well. A lot of it has to do with price, and we've been down this road before, haven't we? Masada, Bushmaster ACR, how's that selling? Not too good. Not too good. Granted, it's even more than this gun. Same for the FN, you know, SCAR-16. How's that selling? How's that been reviewed here in TMP? Not too great. I don't have any plans to bring that one to tabletop. I just, I told you that in the Tavor review. It's like, what does it do to an AR 
can't. And therein lies another problem. This is interesting of why this gun, I think, will fail to connect with the American shooter. Is everybody's got ARs. That's a awesome AR over there. Rock River Arms Operator 2, I think. I've changed the handguard on it. Reviewed it like eons ago. It's representing all AR variants. DI, piston-driven guns. So many people are so invested in the AR weapon system, they don't want to change. I mean, granted, this takes the same magazines. I get all that. But the modularity, the versatility, you can basically, basically configure AR to do whatever you want it to do. I think most shooters will look at this as they did the ACR, as they did the SCAR-16, and they go, oh, kind of cool, video game gun, airsoft gun, no, not for me. Especially at $1,500, $1,600. MSRP's two grand. Nah, I think that's a showstopper. Now, if the price range, talking of value, just leapfrogging ahead, around 1000 we might have a different gun. More people might be interested. You know, would I be one of those? Mm, wait till the end of the video. I'll tell you. I'll tell you then. So, that's my prediction. I just don't think it's going to catch on. Don't get me wrong. The gun does a lot of cool, innovative things that no other gun has done that I've brought to tabletop so far. We're going to talk about those here in about two seconds. It's basically the semi-auto version of the ARX 160. Serving, I guess, in the Italian Armed Forces. Air Force, Army amassing its own track record, which from what I understand is pretty good so far. Kind of young in service, but pretty good. I'm going to kind of cross-reference some other guns, which I think are interesting. It'll add to the discussion. I've already mentioned one. It's the Tavor right here. So when we talk about track record, I'll remind you of this gun. I know it's a bullpup. This is not a bullpup. I get that. POU, I'm going to go really light. I just don't want to spend a lot of time on it. Why is it, man? We love the POU discussion. You want the honest truth? Is Because I don't really dig the gun that much. It's hard for me to talk POU when I don't really super dig the thing. There's the truth. Uh, defensive carbine, patrol carbine, uh, WRL, recreational competition. POU complete. SAWC design and ergos of the ARX 100. This is interesting, actually. Very interesting. When we cover it point by point, you're going to see some really cool things and some things that you just go, what? That's how I, I do it. Seriously. I, I, for instance, I, I mean, it has a mat, uh, you know, a bolt hold open, right? But it's kind of intermittent on how it works. <laughs> I got to get this freaking uh, Surefire mag out. It's kind of stiff in the mag well. And you'll see that. It'll just close on its own accord as we go along here. I'm going to start right here. Features. SAWC Design and Ergos. The barrel's quality is pretty excellent. Cold hammer forged. One and seven twist. Five, five, six chambering. It's got kind of an A2 birdcage on it. I don't like this. Look how freaking skinny that is. Hey, the ARX100 is super lightweight. It is, what, six and a half pounds or something like that naked it is but it's also got a really skinny barrel we can do that with an ar all day long hey i want a really ar a light ar cool i'm gonna put a skinny skinny barrel on it super light handguard maybe a polymer receiver cf receiver you get a gun that weighs the same let's just be honest okay i don't like this of the barrel hate it <laughs> hey that's a cool you know swivel on there I don't think it's cool at all because I think it induces vibration to the barrel during shooting. It's not locked down. Don't we spend a lot of time talking about and free-floating our barrels in precision rifles? Hey, that's not a precision gun, nothing. It's an infantry gun. Okay, I give you that. But if you're going to market it to a civilian buyer, make it accurate. We'll talk more about that. Accurate guns excite people. It's a standard measure guys can talk about at the gun range. Uh, I just don't dig it. it. It's not a showstopper. I just don't like it. I can't remove it. There's, I don't know. I don't like it. Adjustable gas system right here. Just put a bullet tip in there. You can rotate it to whatever position you want. I don't think there's a suppressor position. That's a standard one for factory loaded ammunition. Everyone's pretty much going to leave it right there. Okay. Now this is cool. Watch that bolt. I hope it stays open. 
the barrel removal feature on the ARX100 is a total win. Okay, I told you there's some upsides. And I'm being totally honest with you guys. One of the upsides is that quick removable barrel. You just push these latches here. I'm kind of at a weird angle. Out comes your barrel. Bolt staying open for now. Celebrate that. Hey, it comes right out, doesn't it? Eh, I think it's just me screwing it up. Closer look at the barrel. Skinny portion here after the gas block. Thicker. That's good. Actually, pretty decent thickness. In case you're wondering, that is skinnier than a Tavor barrel, which I did criticize in that review. One millimeter thinner, if you're wondering. Hey, I wasn't wondering that at all, nothing but thanks. Okay. This is kind of cool here. So here's your, this is obviously not a DI gun, but a piston, short stroke piston gun. This kind of has some movement to it, about two inches of travel versus, I don't know, half inch, maybe an inch and some other guns. And this is said to increase reliability with a variety of different ammunition. We'll talk about track record here in a little bit, at least as we shot it. Look into the chamber area, looks very AR-ish to me. Feed ramps right there, but quality. I mean, I look at the barrel, nice. I wish they had an 18 inch barrel version of it. Maybe they do, I missed it. And let's have a super brief discussion about, as I attempt to put the barrel back in without the bolt closing, caliber conversions of the ARX 100. I've said this in other reviews, right? I think caliber conversions are kind of oversold. I love how that snaps in, by the way, and the bolt stayed open, that's cool. Um, I think a lot of guys will buy a gun with the intent of getting all the caliber conversions for it for different uses. Maybe they want to take the gun hunting, going back to POU. Maybe they want to compete with it and they need a different chambering to compete with it. We get all that. I don't think a lot of people do it. Talking to you guys, I don't think a lot of people do it, especially when a caliber conversion for whatever gun you want to choose is expensive. You know, people just go, eh, I don't know if I have $1,000 for a 6.8 SPC conversion. I don't know if I have a thousand dollars for a 300 blackout conversion and I'm ballparking. I honestly don't know what the price will be, but it's not going to be free. You know, I think most people will buy it in a single caliber and just run with that. I think more than anything, caliber conversion for a civilian market, I'm not talking about LE or military for a civilian market, little oversold, kind of a marketing gimmick from what I've seen. I look at my own guns. Even if I wasn't doing TMP, I wouldn't play the caliber conversion game. Here's why. So I buy a lot of ammunition, 1,000 rounds of 5.56. Then I go out and buy a caliber conversion for the ARX 100. Let's say it's in 300 blackout. Now I've got to go buy some more ammo and store those two different ammunitions. Yeah, but each ammo does a different thing, nothing out of the same gun. Okay, I kind of get that actually. And it is one optic. I do get that. That's a big plus. I think it plays more with a precision rifle where the the caliber or the ammunition cost is really up there. I'll leave it at that though. And I really didn't look at what caliber conversions are out right now on the ARX 100. There's going to be some though, no doubt. You know, maybe you guys will dig it. The one I would really be stoked on, 76239. I just love that cartridge. You know, hugely available. A lot of people have stocks of that ammunition already. And it hits pretty hard, 30 cal power. That's pretty good, you know. Why do I need 300 blackout when I got 76239? Eh, shit's quiet or nothing, you should know that. Okay, I'll give you that. Let's go to the fore end. Uh, this is a downside of the ARX100. I, I, I just don't like this area. It looks like the freaking rifle from Aliens right there. It's just really broad, fat guppy looking. I don't like it. This portion here is actually designed to accept what is it, the GLX-160 grenade launcher that Beretta makes? You would think this Picatinny rail continues all the way under there, that this is just a cover for your old hand. It ain't. I'm not going to pop it off. You just lift that here and slide it forward. It's actually an interface for the grenade launcher. Okay, well, why is that a big deal? Well, here's why. Because now you have to buy an adapter, slide the adapter on, and it makes it even taller. Now you have a big old slab of a forend. I don't like a slab forend. It's hard to grasp. It's goofy looking. I don't, I don't like it. The only place you have for a VG without the adapter is right here. Which you could fit one on, no doubt. And it does have side Picatinny rails, top 1913. That's all good. I really like that's included. Put on a light laser combination here. For way of reference, let's look at this Troy Alpha rail. 
Look how slender that is. Now that is a four end. Hey, you compare it to the AR-15, it's not an AR-15. Um, a lot of people are going to compare, compare this to an AR because that's what they have. And when they pick it up, they're used to an AR, they're used to being able to, you know, grab around the circumference of the forehand, they're going to go, whoa, that's kind of fat. Yeah, it's just preference. Well, maybe a lot of guys don't care. I care. I don't like it. Uh, the 1913 rail, I actually like. It is made of, I believe, 6,000 series aluminum. So you're not bolting a scope onto the rail. It's a high rail too, meaning these rings are probably too high. They actually came off this gun during our shooting and you'll see that somewhere along the way. We'll do a tabletop review, but what you're seeing is the proof footage always in TMP. You don't have to take my word for it because you're watching it as I'm talking. So we just slap the scope off of that gun onto this one for accuracy testing. You'll see why here in a little bit. I like the rail though. I guess they added this pin later because people were complaining there was some wiggle. Yeah, that's kind of dicked up. You shouldn't have any wiggle in it, but there was. Um, there's a lot of vents going on here, which you could pack mud into, I guess. But I could say the same thing about an AR. There's lots of holes in that, at least that particular forend. So, eh, minor criticism. Front sling sw swivel, I've lambasted already, and I believe it deserved it. And here's two side ones and one here on the rear stock. Um, I think the Europeans use webbing, a webbing attachment. Here in the U.S., we usually have a hook of some sort, quick detachment. I think that's how it works. I would like to see that flared out, kind of like this one here, that I put on this Rock River so I can just snap into it if I'm running a single point with a drill. It should be circular for the American market. It's not, though. Okay, Magwell, quick look in here. That will take us to the controls. Um, I kind of leveled a criticism uh, against the bolt hold open. We find that it's constantly releasing. Let's see if I can make it release. Of course, it stayed right now. In the field, we were complaining like, yeah, that bolt won't stay open. And it just wouldn't. I, I don't know. It was with this gun, and then we shot another one. Um, the other one seemed to work a little bit better. Minor point, whatever. There's a couple ways to hold the bolt open. You can come right here, right, and push it up. There it goes. See what I'm saying? How kind of it's finicky. You can push right there, do the same thing. And one thing I was doing constantly is I was thinking this was my mag release during shooting. I'd come down, I was like, oh, that's my mag release. Mag release because probably my habit pattern with the AR. Actually, your magazine release is here. This is your bolt release. And you're just going to have to train with that. The safety is kind of a, a good thing. I don't mind it, but it's very positive. I like that. You're stuck with the pistol grip. Hope you like it. Looks like it came off uh, AR A2, right? M16 series A2 grip. This is one of the things that I just don't like about these uh, boutique tactical carvings made of polymer. You're stuck with them. Now, let's keep it real. I always do. We could say the same thing on the Tavor, right? Right. But I like that hand grip on the Tavor. I, I don't know if I can improve it much. But there's no modularity here like there is with that gun. How about the trigger? How about this? It absolutely sucks. I hate this trigger. I really do. And I'm not holding back. You might detect that. Here's the trigger scale. It just seems plasticky, stiff, and airsofty to me. It does. It should pull around 10 to 11 pounds. Let's see what it does here. There you go. 10, 12 you really learn about it, learn about a trigger when you're testing it for accuracy. Okay, I just did the Evo 3 Scorpion video, right? And I said, when I shot that gun in the field, I didn't really notice a problem with the trigger. But when I started shoot, shooting it for accuracy, I was annoyed. Completely annoyed. And this is much worse, so I just don't like the trigger. And I don't understand it. They took so long to bring this gun to market. It's not a bullpup. Why couldn't you put a good trigger in it? You're charging guys a lot of money too. $1,500, has a crappy trigger. That's kind of a showstopper for me. It really is, because if you talk about value, how much AR-15 can I get for $1,500? I guarantee it's gonna have a really nice trigger. Those Rock River triggers dominate this one. I haven't even pulled this one lately, but let's try it. This is a 
stock Rock River match trigger, which comes with all the guns. Let's pull it, just to remind ourselves what a value. This is a value AR-15, dudes. It really is. What it pulls at. 5-2. Straight from Rock River. No gunsmithing included. Heck, if it wasn't in your gun, you could buy it for 120 bucks. See, it's just... Come on, man. You're going to charge a lot for a gun? Get it right. But it's cool. It's different. That's not enough in today's market. The competition's too fierce, man. I'm going to put this mag in it. Actually, I won't because i got to show you some stuff on the bolt. So I don't like it. It's crunchy, plasticky feeling. Will the aftermarket, you know, come in to the rescue? Geisley, Timney? I don't know. But like I said in the Tavor trigger review recently, that just adds cost. So I hear I bought a $1,500 gun. Trigger's so dicked up, I got to go spend another $300? No. Now, you might be wondering, and if you are, you are wise. What's better between the stock Tavor trigger and the stock ARX 100 trigger? Answer, Tavor. Tavor doesn't pull light, but it breaks really clean and it provides for or allows you to shoot it very accurately. If you want to go spend three, three large, 300 on a trigger, go ahead. Cool. This is cool about the ARX. Pressing along. It is a fully ambidextrous rifle. If you are a lefty, you should pretty much forget everything I've said to this point and think about buying one. I'm keeping it real. I'm hooking them up. Because you can switch the ejection left and right easily just by depressing this right here with a bullet tip or whatever you got. And it will automatically eject it to the side you select. You can change the charging handle side like so. Pull that out. You come to that flat portion here. Just pull it out. Fold your charging handle all the way through. Voila! And then you got to push it back in. Now you have a right-sided charging handle. It's kind of small, but I didn't really find that to be an annoyance for me. That's cool. Another plus on the RX100, and I love this feature. Everyone did. When it's empty and it's locked to the rear, look at that big gaping clue that you're empty. You don't have that with a Tavor. You don't have that with a lot of guns. Hey man, am I empty? I don't know. Look at the sky, the blue sky showing through your gun. Yeah, you're empty. I like that. I'm not going to totally feel strip it, so we'll take a look at the bolt right here. Very AR-15-ish, M4, M16-ish right there. Stays clean back there because it's a piston gun. That'll take us to the stock. I love the folding feature of the stock. It's cool. Locks, and it doesn't wiggle at all when it's in position. They designed that hinge perfectly. Do I need a folding stock? Um, it's okay if it has no downsides, and I see this one as having no downsides, like there's no wiggle. So you can totally ignore it if you want. And in the off chance you need it to be super compact, maybe you're throwing in a ruck or something, fold it. You can do it. The cheek piece is a plus. This is a win as well. Unlike the SCAR series, it doesn't have a, and I think even ACR, a raisable cheek pad that will smack you during recoil. Less of a factor with a 5.56. Like I said in the FN17S review, much more factor with a 308. Okay, but it's smooth. I don't like how freaking short this is. This was marketed to the American market. You should have had a longer stock. Butt spacers, whatever. Hey, but Brett is coming out with a longer one. Oh, you mean the one I have to buy extra? Okay, that. Okay, cool. Well, $1,500 gun should have come with it, says me. I like the adjustment. What is it, like a five position stock or something? But just, everyone's going to shoot it right there. Unless you just have layers upon layers of body armor. I don't know. Features, design, ergos. Okay, don't dig the trigger. I don't really dig the control placement. Maybe it's just me. I don't. Um, the overall feel. Let's talk about ergos of how it works. Uh, it is light. Okay, and that's a plus. You guys know XDM sitting here. Table decoration. Nice. You guys know I love the light stuff. I am. And I'm stoked on the lightweight of this gun. No lie. It's much lighter than a Tavor. It's much lighter than pretty much all its other competitions. SCAR 16, ACR, heck for that matter, Robinson Arms XCR. That's a plus. And yet, I don't like it. I, when shooting it, I just, 
I didn't find it enjoyable. It's just, I don't know if it's the forend. I didn't have a VG to hang on to. Um, I, I just, I don't know. I just didn't dig it. I, and neither did PFI, dude. He was shot with me and he's like, eh, it's okay. It's okay. And I make sure when I'm shooting with these dudes that I don't, I don't want to influence them. I don't want them to say, I want data from my crew members or my guests who are shooting with me. So I, I try to stay mute on my dislikes and likes until we've shot a lot. And he came with up on his own. He's like, yeah, I just, I don't know, I just don't dig it. Um, that's it. Firepower's AR-15 standard, I guess. It will accept the Surefire mag, although you really got to push it in to lock it. I did not test this mag, sorry. I just tested regular, a variety of AR-15 style mags. They work fine. I've heard that drums don't work. Um, so you might want to check that out before you commit to it. One thing I forgot to say is it does have redundant ejectors in the bolt, which it has to have because you can dictate which side it ejects from. You know, the marketing people at Bread will say, well, that allows you, if one ejector fails, you can go over to the other one. I just don't see that happening. I think the big sell on it is ambi nature of the ARX100, which is something, something. Oh, the BUIS, backup iron sights. We actually started shooting uh with these iron sights on and they're okay i mean i didn't hate them i was like oh that's kind of cool they're included they kind of have a plasticky airsoft feel to them i'm not going to mount them on now just not but you know there's a little bit of wiggle in the rear sight it has multiple apertures for different distances i guess you know up to what 500 600 meters i guess not bad yep. ar-15 style post they're included if you don't like them just throw on a different pair cool they're there are they like on par with the price level no they're not fifteen sixteen hundred dollar gun i would like to see you know something name brand on there magpul mini Embus. that would excite me i would like that firepower like i said standard if you get it in another caliber in the years to come that comes out and check that out it'll, it'll be appropriate to that caliber and then let's go into accuracy this is where i kind of didn't dig the gun so much now, all my testing was just at, oh, I take that back. We did do some 100 yard. I forgot that. This is 50 yards. Dang, I thought I had another target. I think I do. Hang on, hang on. Grab it. Okay. Here we go. 50 yards. Uh, PFI dude shooting this one. And that's a good group. Really good group at 100 yards. At 50 yards, that's not that great. I think this was iron sight, so to be honest with you, the stock iron sight. That's an okay group. This is shooting Fioki, which is a pretty consistent ammo. That's not a good group at 50 yards. Because eh, you got to double it at 100, right? So we're looking at one and a half. So that's a three MOA group at 100. If we just interpolate there. And then I threw in what I've known to be a very accurate ammo tacticalammunition.com 77 grain match. This is at 50 yards with a Beretta ARX 100. This is both of us shooting. Uh, not great. That's not a good group. Horrible group here. Not a good group here. I think I shot that one too. I felt really good about the trigger pulls. I took my time. Granted, we're shooting off a dang polymer table in the desert, but yeah, I've seen guns do a lot better. A lot better. Kind of like, just because we had it here, the Rock River Arms. That same gun right there, shooting with irons. We took the scope off. I was like, well, maybe it's us. Maybe we're just not shooting the gun. Let's get a control, the Rock River Arms, because I know that gun's accurate. I shot that group right there with irons. Troy dioptic sights. I don't like that dioptic back, by the way. I hate it. I like standard ones. But back to the ARX, here's 50 yards. This is all me, PMC. TacticalAmmunition.com, 77 grain, 50 yards. It's not like show-stoppingly bad. That PMC group's actually pretty good. I like that group. And then we push it out to 100, and we, we just said, hey, you know what? We got to rob that scope from the Rock River and put it on here. We've got to give this gun every opportunity to show what it can do. And I thought we did with the ammo. We shot some really high-quality ammunition that, I, that has shot very well out of other guns. For instance, this Taft Ammunition 77 uh, grain match, I marked this in the video, may, you may see it, because this is where it grouped, like that, one, two, three. That's a pretty good group. Gold medal match.
from Federal, 69 grain. Not bad. Not awesome, but not bad. That's pretty good. That was shot really good. And I said 77. I think that's 69 grain gold medal match here. And so was that. That's an awful group. We're not sure what happened there. Fioki 55 shooting here. My takeaway is this. Um, the gun is good accuracy. I will call it 2 to 3 MOA with ball ammunition. With match ammunition, if you're really, really lucky, you'll get 1.5 MOA with careful, careful shooting. Um, good. It's not excellent. It's not accuracy. And yes, it takes away some of my enthusiasm for the gun. We shot heavy bullets out of that one and seven twist. Still didn't produce that great. Track record. We had three to four light primer strikes with different types of ammunition. Don't know why. Not made up, just the way it happened. Somewhere you'll see that. Don't know. We're just like, whoa, check that out. Was it the ammo? Well, we you know, popped the rounds out, looked at it. Happened with another type of ammo. After that, it went away. We didn't have any other stoppages. Yeah, like I said, it's in service with the italian military the indian military from india has tested it in snow and mud testing and it passed with flying colors the 160 and one of the few rifles they tested that did that's that's good i really have no reservations about its reliability i don't most of my reservations are on the ergonomics and the accuracy there you go especially for what you can get in return and i guess we'll talk about that, about that super briefly i have fifteen hundred dollars what would I do with it? If you're asking me, I would build one of my own SPRs. 18 inch barrel, look at my video, Concept SPR. That's what I would do with that money. It's a gun that will totally outshoot this one, just as reliable for the amount of shooting I would do with it. Hey, but it's it's direct gas impingement. This is a piston gun. I get that. I love DI, it works great. I have no issues with it at all. I've always said that. That's what I would do. I could get the exact handguard I wanted, the exact trigger I wanted, the exact grip I wanted, you get the picture. Completely customized to me, not stuck with all this. Not out of the box where I have this and I'm just sitting here dry firing at home going, that trigger sucks. That's what I do. But if you really want a boutique tactical carbine, go back again, look at the Bushmaster ACR. That's like 8.2 8 pounds, by the way. MSRP on that is like $25, $2,700. It's insane. Those aren't selling very well. I never hear anyone talking about them. I don't know anyone who owns one. I have no plans to review it yet. Subject to change. You'll get that FN16 if you wanted. Still expensive. I'm sure it's a good gun. The 17S shot so well. The problem with that I have with FN16, SCAR16, uh, the price. Like I said, I'll go with an AR. Uh, Tovor. And I don't know why, but I just think about the Tavor a lot when I'm thinking about the ARX 100. Remember what I said about timing and how it's everything. The Tavor came on the market at the right time. The market was very hungry for a very reliable, very accurate, in this case, battle proven bullpup. It got it in the Tavor. Right here, I raved about the Tavor in the review. The only thing you can really say against it is it's kind of heavy and the trigger's not super awesome. The rest is bullpup standard and it's pretty excellent. I don't think the ARX 100 has any chance of dislodging the Tavor. I know, it's a bullpup, I know. But if I had money and I was like, hey, you got to get something different, not an AR or a variation of an AR, M4 variation, what would you get? I'd probably get the Tavor still. I mean, the track record on this is insane. It's been fighting with the Israelis forever. You talk about all the testing. I mean, when you buy a Tavor, you get all that. It's going to take years for this to make a track record. And it could be really awesome. It could be. You know, other that gun options. Cool. You know, RDB by Caltech. I, that had all kinds of problems when we ran it. All kinds of problems. I, are they going to perfect it? I don't know. It's not available yet. I know that's a bullpup as well. Course it is. I just keep going back to the AR. AR of your favorite flavor. Oh, Heck, go get a Rock River. Totally made already. I love this can, man. And there's a Jim bunch of ARs. I'm just using Rock River as an example. Smith and Wesson ARs are awesome. Delton. List goes on and on, dude. Value options. Uh, I said 15 to 16. That's what oh, you're going to expect to pay. 
it might go a little bit deeper when the accessory market if and when and by the way that's a big if catches up to the ARX 100 for an accessory market to come out and flourish they have to sell a lot of these if I'm in the company I like our Geisley for instance hey let's make a trigger for the ARX 100 well how many have sold uh, 500 in the US Ooh, we're not doing that we're gonna lose our shirt on it Devel development costs notice they did it for the Tavor Timney did it Geisley did it what's that tell you the guns are selling there's a lot of people demanding it. Hey, make a trigger, make a trigger. It could happen with this as well. But you could buy the accessory rail from Beretta. Uh, okay, extended stock from Beretta. Caliber conversions, if and when they become available, you could buy that. There you go. I think they're gonna make an FDE version if they haven't already. If you are still stoked about the ARX 100, I would probably wait to get the FDE version. It will resell better. People just love that color for a lot of reasons. I'm one of them and it looks cooler there you go other than you know magazines AR standard i don't know what to tell you on accessories unless you hate these hate these hey if the gun had come out like i said four years ago would it would have established a stronger foothold in the market i, I think it would have you know because it didn't have the tavor out there and other guns detracting from it will it can it do it now I could be completely off, and yeah, it does, oh, but the big downsides for me are showstoppers. I hate the trigger. I don't like the control placement. Uh, the that bolt slams good. close all the time. I really don't like the slab front end on it. I don't like the skinny barrel. I don't like the swivel here, and I totally did not like the accuracy. It wasn't horrible, but it didn't excite me. And when I take a $1,000 AR like the Rock River out and shoots into half them away with ball ammo, go watch that review. That excites me. I think a lot of civilian shooters are that way. Everyone can relate to that. Accurate guns excite people. Two to MOA. Beretta ARX 100. I am complimenting them for bringing it to market. It remains to be seen, though, if it will be successful. Good luck. If you have one, I hope you love it. I hope it gives you big smiles. Ultimately, that's what our guns do. They just provide recreation, protect us at the same time. Out. That's it. I wouldn't buy it. <laughs>